<laughs> to get off to a blazing start here. Whoa. Uh, this is not very comfortable. How are you doing? Uh, I'm looking at my computer over here. Sorry. All right. Hey, my name is Joseph. The channel's Briggs R. I collect Lego. I got so much Lego, I don't know how to get around down here anymore. So we're going to be doing something that ties in with a set that's actually behind me right there in that box. It is the bat pod, and I need to finish building the bat pod. So in order to build the bat pod, I need two of these. But I have three. So I'm going to build one of them. I've never built a Hero Factory set before. I don't know anything about Hero Factory, uh, but I um, thought I would do that in this video. All right, who is here with me? We got Jim Blade, Rowan Collins, Shiny Bricks, GTA, I mean GTSH Productions, Zai is here. President Said is here. Hello. Strike Everything Builds and Games is here. Domino Fan 0803. Please subscribe to Domino Fan 0803. I don't say that to everybody. Uh, we got Patrick J. Ford. Hello, hello. Rio, Rilo Bricks and Deb Ramey. All right, so I'm going to be building this Breeze Flea machine, thus the stupid title. And I did look at my YouTube homepage and subscriptions to see that, make sure nobody else was live streaming. There were two people live streaming, but there were Bionicle people, BZ Power and LJ Johnson. So I'm not a Bionicle person, so we can do that. We can build this. Although this is kind of like Bionicle, it's Hero Factory. And you open it up, kind of like one of those resealable bag of nuts. So I've never, I don't think I've ever built a Hero Factory set. Um, so there's the instructions. I'm going to open this up. Aussie Brick Chick, hey! I need to start check in YouTube when I wake up in the mornings, because sometimes y'all are live when I'm getting up, getting ready for work. I need to put that on while I'm eating breakfast or something. I think on Fridays, sometimes y'all are live. James Box is here, Rowan Collins. How's the city cleanup going? It's going terribly. It's going awful. I need to hire a cleaning crew. <laughs> hey, Lego Freak is here. Bubby Bricks. MJ Bricks. Yes. Aussie Brick Chicks live, and that, uh, they're in Australia, so it's like it's really, really, really early in the morning here in, in East, East Coast U.S. All right, so I got everything out here. Harry Nowicki. <laughs> hey, Montando is here. I'm glad you could catch me live too, James Box. And hey, Lucas, Luke's Bricks. Where are you right now? I'm sitting at uh, this white melamine table that's very worn out in my basement. All right, so um, there's only 102 pieces. Got some very odd pieces. This is. This is one of those. I'm probably going to be shaking the table with us. Oh, it's got a string. Hate string. But if you were looking at a pile of parts somewhere, you might not recognize these as Lego parts. But, um, and then that's a Lego part. But the reason I bought this is for the, these parts here. This is a part that you need for. Wait a minute, is there only one in here? I thought there were. Oh. Oh, there he is. There's two. There's two. I think there's supposed to be three. Yeah, there's three. I need I needed a couple of these for the bat pod. And so that's this is a set of Gatum 44027 Breeze Flea Machine. All right. Hey, happy brick 1985. This doesn't look like the basement. It is. This is uh, the back wall of the basement. That's the under the stairs right there. These are from Clutch, Bricks on the Dollar, Agents, and that is the monorail poster. He's got a t-shirt service, but I can't afford to do it. I would love to do it. Uh, I may just buy individual t-shirts from him. Uh, Kevin Hinkle was seen sporting the castle one. I guess, I don't know, I think Kevin might have designed that. 
I'm already getting bored of the build, and I haven't even started. Um, I probably should ask if anybody wants to join. Not, oh, you know what? I did it from the YouTube app, so I can't let anybody join. This is... Uh, I, hopefully they'll fix that where you can let people join. So I don't know how to do that from here. Happy break 1985. Do you think he says, do you think Galador will return? I think it's only going to return in the ways that they've brought it back, like t-shirts on a minifigure, that type of thing. I don't think it will ever come back as a theme. So this is the flea. Wow. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Let's do that again. I, I'm done building. I'm just going to play with this thing. <laughs> Hello. <Bob>. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to play with this. Oh, I uh, broke it. Okay. This is actually, this is better than those uh, superhero jumper things. I think, anyway. <laughs> hey, Spongebo Garden. <laughs> Rogue Runner is in the house. All right. Yeah, I think bounce is pretty good. You know what? Uh, uh, Rowan asked, what do you think of the Jeffrey Drass picture, leaving the empty Toys R Us? A lot of people did videos um, for the last day. I actually thought about going to Toys R Us the last day, but I did not. And I went last week, and there was nothing really worth buying. And the store was already pretty much empty. Then we had just the front part of the store, but it would have been neat to do like a little thing going to the store, but I didn't, but it's, it's, I think it's sad for some people that, man, this, how do you build this thing? All right. I need me figure legs. This is hard. So it goes like that. Another leg. Where's he? He's got a black skeleton for his torso. So do like that. Brick Clone says, did you get your hair cut? <laughs> yes. I went to Great Clips and got my hair cut. Um, what's left of my hair? I will be bald before long. Just live with it. You know, nothing I can do about it. So I just put that piece on and it fell. BBI. Let's try it again. All right, then this torso, what is this piece? Oh, it's this one. So that goes on there. I thought this was a minifigure, but it's kind of, it's a hero factory figure. Is the H upside down? He's got a red head, skeleton head. The Warwicks is here. Thank you for joining. I'm glad you were able to catch it. Spongeo says the kids say your hair is on point, Mr. Briggs are. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know what happens when you have kids. You lose your hair. My kids are good kids, so I like my kids. So we'll, let's put this over here. That's the Hero Factory figure. So we built the Hero... I, I'm going back to play with this thing. No, I'm glad I got those boxes there to catch stuff. So we got the flea, and we got that dude. All right, Lego Man One Two Three. We are building Breeze and the flea machine. Scott's toy is here. Snowmaster is here. Brick, uh, Aussie Brick Chick says, "I love the Jurassic Park tee you've been wearing in recent videos." My wife bought that for me at a Target store a few years back. Nader is here from Nader's Mocks. Yes, I will. I'll be. I, I mentioned this in a comment on. Um, I think it was Beyond the Brick did a video about the Toys R Us clo closing. They had the sad music and everything. And I know it, it's Toys R Us is something that's special to a lot of people that grew up with it or whatever. I will. T do you want me to tell you what my feelings are? You know, I did a video about it. Kind of, but not completely. This is not... Is this the right piece? But... Okay. These are these ball and socket joints here. So, when I grew up, there was no Toys R Us in my area. It may have existed as a company. I don't know. 
but this we had Milton Bradley, which was a smaller toy store, kind of like a KB Toys, if people remember KB Toys. Milton Bradley was in the Cop Center Mall, and we had the Lionel Play World, which is on Cobb Parkway at Windy Hill Road. <laughs> Not that that means anything to most of y'all. And so I used to go to both of those. I'd have my, you know, my mom went shopping at the Cobb Center looking for clothes. I would be at Cole's Bookstore and Milton Bradley. They're kind of close to each other. Those are two places I would go. And then I would always like, if we were in that area, I would say, Mom, I want to go by Lionel Play World. And my mom would go to Lionel Play World. And usually I would run in the store. She'd tell me not to take too long or whatever. And I would go look at the trains and I would look at the Lego. And then I would come back outside and didn't buy anything. But I was so sad when Lionel Play World closed because that one was very special. They had a much better train selection than Toys R Us ever had. It was almost like a hobby shop. They had so much trains and they had a good Lego selection for that time period, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, so I was kind of sad that, you know, Lionel Play World, you know, the theme, Shop Lionel Play World, toy capital of the world. Had kangaroo for the mascot. But so Lionel Play World went away. Toys R Us came in. Maybe I thought Toys R Us kind of ran Lionel Play World out. I don't know. But my thing with Toys R Us is they were always so high priced. Of course, I didn't know about price matching and all that, but I just didn't really care for Toys R Us. I did get some Lego deals back in the day, back in the early 90s. I got some good deals. Uh, they did a very poor job with their inventory a long time ago. Sometimes you could find old sets in the stores. But I kind of just got burned out on Toys R Us because of the uh, ridiculous, ridiculously high prices. So I just stopped going. I didn't go for years. And I was doing YouTube videos and doing my hauls. And the first person, it was actually clutch, bricks on the dollar, was telling me, you know, you use, you got to use your, um, you know, either the price matching or go on Thursdays and go when the prices are lower. And there's a, there's a technique to buying at Toys R Us. And so that didn't come around until just a few years ago. So it's only been since YouTube, since I've been doing YouTube videos since 2013, basically, or sooner that I've actually even been going to Toys R Us. So. I didn't care for Toys R Us before that. Okay, here's the part that I need for the, what you call. Okay, so a lot of people have been commenting, so I've been ignoring the comment. Let me go back up here to the top. Lego Freaks, so they remember KB Toys. Jody Smith says, I don't think they really want to see a company survive or they wouldn't have turned down offers from other people to try to save the company. I think it was, it was living in debt is what they were doing. Hey, there is Butt Shop 2021. Your package was shipped if it, okay, I hope you do a video, <laughs> but everybody subscribe to Butt Chop 2021. Um, he, he's, he's sent me a lot of Thomas and Friends stuff. In fact, I don't even know. It's not over there. I got a box. It's over there. And then I got a box in that room over there with a bunch of Thomas and Friends and Disney Play Rail trains that he sent me. All right. Hey, Harry. And he's here. Um Let's see what I'm trying to catch up on the comments here. It says Brick Clone says, Don't know if you've seen my latest video or not. You should. Oh, I should check your video. I'm sorry. I have not seen it. I will um, check it out. Happy Brick 1985 says, What do you think of Brick Buster? I think it's. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I don't think much of it. All right. Um, Lego Freak said, my TRS uh, never had good deals. Kittenville Brick says, Toys R Us was good when they had Black Fridays. Oh, yeah. And, the, you know, the exclusive offers, things like that, too, were good. Oh, Sponge Joe is now July. You say you love me, but you lie. All right. Um, all right. Butt Chop said he'll do a video when that box arrives. <laughs> Brick Clone, 500 questions with Brick Czar. Yes. And uh, Happy Brick 1985, 
ask a very, very, very good question. I've actually answered this from time to time, but it doesn't come up on my channel a lot because one thing I don't collect things like this, like Hero Factory. I consider Hero Factory to be kind of like a form of Bionicle. It doesn't. It's got a different story, obviously. Um, I will say this: when Bionicle first came on the scene, it's funny. I'm doing this while there is. BZ Power is doing a Jurassic World stream right now. So they're doing a stream on non-Bionicle stuff. <laughs> and here I am, who, somebody who doesn't collect Bionicle. Uh, I do have some Bionicle in my collection. I do have some Hero Factory, obviously. But um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I didn't care for the Bionicle theme. It, it didn't look Lego-like to me. I don't disrespect or hate on anybody that likes Bionicle. I really get it uh, as something that appeals to a lot of people, and I know the story is something that appeals to people. I was never into the stories of themes. I just liked interesting buildings. I didn't need the story behind it, but Lego's doing a very good job of kind of drawing me in, like doing things with the modular houses. They actually build, or the modular buildings, they build stories into them. And so, anyway, Bionicle, I'm not an expert at all on Bionicle. Don't collect the theme. I do have, we probably got like 20 or so Bionicle sets. This is where my appreciation for Bionicle goes, is that it pretty much helped. It, it's not the sole reason, but it was one of the big reasons why Lego didn't go under back in the day. So Bionicle, well, I personally, it's not a theme that I am crazy about i do get it i do understand why people like it i do appreciate what it did for the lego group and i am kind of sad that for the bionicle fans that they discontinued it maybe it'll come back i i don't know i know that they probably should have got more input from the fans of bionicle uh, which i guess they did to a certain extent but anyway that's my two cents on bionicle not a theme that i was into but I do appreciate it. And I've just missed... Man, y'all are commenting so fast. I, back in the day, when I do a live stream, there'd be like nobody on here. All right, I got to say this. Hello, Dunkster Bricks. <laughs> How you doing? It's good to see you all the way over in Scotland. We got two people from Scotland in the chat now. Awesome. Rick Clone says, I'm trying to get my cousin into making YouTube videos. Do you have any advice? Don't. My advice? Don't take my advice. <laughs> Here's what I would say. Don't talk anybody into doing videos if they don't want to do them. Just let them come about it naturally because to do YouTube successfully, you got to want to do it. Um, so that's my advice. And sometimes people aren't ready to deal with all the hate and the, the stupid people in the world. There's a lot of stupidness in the world. I want to be positive. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I just did a video talking about stupid eBay listings. But, you know, to me that's different than, like, openly attacking somebody. It's just minding their own business. Aussie Brickstrick says, I'm a victim of my own popularity. All things are relative here. Bloated Bumblebee is in England. Hello. <laughs> All right, MJ Bricks. Glad you were able to join us for a little bit. He's got to go. Yes, Butt Chop brings out a very good point here. It says there are a lot of times there are underlying motives behind people's actions. So... I don't want to be one of those people. I want to be who I am all the time. Like, well, you know, back in the day when I was first dealing with um, hate on YouTube, it's like people have key, what they call keyboard courage. And there's actually some people that are pretty successful at YouTube that have a lot of keyboard courage. And my thing was when people have openly or not openly but privately attacked me I was like well I hope you have the courage to say that to my face because if you don't 
don't don't waste your time saying it because and people are real courageous when they're like in the isolation of their basement like here i am in my basement i can say whatever i want nobody's going to be coming in here and getting me but i try to keep things nice you know because what's the point there's so much negativity in the world um the world's pretty much a bad place for a lot of people so why 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 contribute to that why be what what, what good does it do? Is it going to make you a few more cents? You're going to, you know, get some more AdSense revenue. You're going to become popular and gain subscribers. Um, yeah, why not try being a nice person? Try that. It says King David it says, Brigzar, have you heard about the most famous Lego reviewer? Is that me? I don't know. Is that who you're talking about? <laughs> Tiggs88 is here. Hello. I missed you before. Uh, Thyssen, Thyssen, Thomas is the Belgians love us. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Julia May. Hey. Thank you for being here. Uh, Dunster Brick says building people up is much more fun. Absolutely. I I agree. Let's build up people. Okay, I don't know what. Oh, did I do this wrong? I get, oh. This is hard. This set is hard. I think that's how it goes. I need a Bionicle or Hero Factory expert. Hey, Brick and Babs. <laughs> Julia May, what are you talking about? Are you talking to me? We were just talking about try, trying to be positive on YouTube instead of negative because there's it's too easy to be negative. It's what gets the views. It's what, and I, I guess I, I could come across as being hypocritical saying that. Um, I put this on backwards. Um, I mean, if people, there's, it's like the thing with the eBay listings. I mean, I think it's just funny uh, talking about those. I Hopefully I wasn't offending any of the people that actually listed those items. I don't think I was attacking their character or what type of person they are. I just think it's something that's funny. And I don't think it's something that's going to tear anybody down. That, that type of stuff is, I think is okay. But if I'm wrong, you know, you know let me know. I've done enough stupid things in my life. I want to do smart things now. Man, this is hard. Butt Chop says, Lego is part of my therapy. It helps my mental state, but it also starts to counteract my positive well-being. I need to... And I don't know. I YouTube, even if I didn't get the interaction, which I really appreciate the interaction... Um, there's sometimes I need to take a break from all digital media, uh, and I've done that. I've tried to maintain my balance. It's really, 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 really hard. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I'm not necessarily OCD, uh, but I might be. I mean, I'm OCD. Uh, I'm the messy OCD. You got somebody like Monk that's real clean. I'm real messy. <laughs> but, so I get to doing things too much. Uh, that's why everything I collect, I collect too much of an extreme. So I have to find the balance and not over collect things. Uh, when I started YouTube, I was doing three to five videos a day. When I would film videos on Fridays, I would film 10 and schedule them. It was insane. Uh, you know, the videos were pretty bad. They, the, my videos now are still pretty bad, but <laughs> um, I was just obsessive with, like, I got to make more videos, got to make more videos, got to make more videos. And it's just not healthy. And I, I did that for almost two years straight. And then I just kind of got to a breaking point. It's, it's ironic, or I don't even know if that's the right word, but Lego, 
if you look at the popularity of Lego and look at the take a um, take a top YouTube channel like Jane Briggs, uh, who's been pretty consistent of what he does. If you look at his channel numbers, they kind of flow with the Google trends for the popularity of the Lego um, the Lego search term on Google. And I was it's just coincidental, but at the point where I had done too much and I needed to take a break. So I took a break for a month. I didn't make any videos. I didn't check anything. And my channel stayed kind of level and then it, it, then it tanked. And I thought it was because of me taking a break. But when I got to looking at other things and looking at the Google trends, it's just the whole Lego theme in general uh, lost it, the popularity that it had in 2012, 2013, 2014, in 2015, it started to go down. And so when I looked at it from that perspective, it's like, even though my, my numbers are teeny tiny, um, when I compare it to the big picture, it's like, oh, it's just following the trends. So I didn't feel so bad after that. And it's just, there's so much, um, in order to be successful in, in, well, I say successful in order to do well, as far as subscribers and viewers, view count, uh, some people might view that successful. I, I view more now you guys as successful, the ones that I'm ignoring right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but Because you can get a lot of views. There's things you can do to get a lot of views, and I don't want to do those things. There's certain things that I just don't want to do because that's not me. Now, there are things that I will kind of reach at doing because it is, it's kind of borderline, uh, like um, the Thomas and Friends stuff. If I get something, like I got something today, I did a video on it because I got it today, so I want to do a video. Uh, but I'm not going to go buy stuff at higher than retail prices to be the first to do it, and I really don't want to do, be the one that's taking the lego photos and doing videos on the photos not that there's anything wrong with that but basically in the youtube world to grow that's what you got to do you got to basically take other people's content and repurpose it and talk about it and be on top of the trends that way um, that's the only way you can grow or have something that's unique that is really engaging and popular so there's not it's not, it's not a rule, an absolute rule, but yeah, if you'll look at, you know, you can grow your channel without actually owning any Lego. <laughs> and so that, that's just the way it is, but I don't want to be that person. That's not who I want to be because that's, I'm not, that's not, yeah, that's not who I am. I, 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 want, I want to do the things the way I've been doing them, which means... If I don't get the views, I won't get the views. All right, let me get this back here. All right, now I've been ignoring y'all, so I'll come back to this. Joseph is here. Hey. Yeah, I'm just rambling. I was going to build this set, and um, I get to talking. Brick Clone says, will you ever do a video with Brick Tech? A Brick Tech? I'm hoping to do 10 questions with Brick Tech. I've done videos with Brick Tech, and sometimes we, you know, if he does a live stream... I've been invited in, and same thing, you know, here. Nice people. I like people that are nice, don't you? <laughs> Adam Brick is here. Adam is <laughs> building the uh, most awesome mock. All right, I, I need to really get building. It's the only problem with doing a live stream by yourself. Well, there's a lot of problems. Uh, one is... In order to build, you have to look away from the chat, which means you don't see it. So I, I, when I, I build, I don't see your chat. And when I look at the chat, I don't build. So I thought this was a small enough set that it, I could do this in a relatively quick enough time, but I'm not. Thank you, James Box. See you, Happy Brick. Thanks for joining. And Patrick says, as long as you still do vintage. And I, I will do vintage. And um, when I get in the right place, I, I have I have ideas in my head, the things I want to do. But this is the, the real world is I have bills to pay. 
I have a mortgage. I have teenagers. I have five cars. Two of them are my kids, but I pay the insurance on them. I have lots of responsibility, so videos kind of get put on the back burner. And this is my time today. I was like, you know what? I had some free time today. I'll do this video because I needed to, to open those parts up to get these things for the bat pod. <laughs> Brick Clone asked, does they might be bricks like Lego Technic? He likes it to a degree, but he doesn't like building it so much. Um, he doesn't usually finish anything he starts with the Technic. So we got the uh, we got a rather large Technic set that he never finished building that I need to finish building. Um, Joseph asks, how are you? I am good. Thank you, Tiggs. And Matt Lipinski says, life comes first. That's absolutely right. And it's like, if I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm one of those people that's able to retire from my real job early one day. Uh, I'll be honest with you. There was a time. Oh, this is, where's this piece? What is this? Hold on a minute. I got, I guess, oh, it's this piece. It's got, it's got printing on it. So there was a time a year ago when I thought YouTube was going to be like, actually it's more than it's a year and a half ago. It was 2016. The latter part of 2000. I thought YouTube was going to be like the thing for me because it was like doing really good. So, but you know, that didn't last, you know, the Logan Paul stuff happened and YouTube died. So, um, I'm glad I still had my full-time job and I'm glad I never quit my job. And in the grand grand scheme of things, it's like I have a really good job and it's it's um, has good benefits. I don't like that I'm on call all the time. That's the only thing is that I'm on call more often. So that's kind of the limit what I can do with YouTube. But, yeah, I like I like my job and it pays well. And if I can just stick with it a few more years, I can retire. Patrick says, I love watching your vintage videos. Bring back the happy memories. And that I like taking the vintage stuff to shows because there are people like, oh, I had that when I was a kid, especially people my age or an older. Like, I had that. And so I need to do more vintage stuff. And um, we, I want to do the vintage series. Uh, and so when I get in the right frame of mind and get everything situated, we will get to doing that. But like, oh, well, yeah, I was saying that a minute ago. I got all these ideas in my head of things that I want to do with YouTube, but I don't have the time to do them. But eventually, um, I, I if I don't make videos, it's not because I didn't have ideas for the videos. It's because I didn't have the time or the um, motivation at the time. He's a tiger he says, keep going, mate. Your last video was monetized. Made 12 cents. Yay. <laughs> hey, Drew Christie. I am doing okay. It's Saturday. It's very hot outside. Oh, we have a, I got, my house is old, getting older. It's not old, but it's, it's getting into the stage where things start to need work. And one of the things is we need to, get our air conditioner serviced. Um, yeah. But it's still working. I, I'm able to work on it myself sometimes because I know how to do those things. But one thing I can't do is put Freon in it, and it is low on Freon. So I kind of rig things up to where it kind of works. But I need to get somebody over here to put some Freon in my air conditioning unit. Don't fire the flick, flick fire missiles. This is cool. Did anybody see? Some of you that got here late, you didn't see this. Oh, well, that wasn't too good. Let me do it again. Flee! I like that thing. All right. We're getting close to finishing this set. Hey, Dalek Bricks. Dalek, Dalek, Dalek. Exterminate. Sin Killer is here! Now, you just need more duct tape. I... I got a wart. I need some duct tape. Um, <laughs> did anybody used to watch MacGyver back in the day?
Bye, Dunkster. Man, I forget. It's so late where you're at right now. If y'all not subscribed to Dunkster Bricks, please subscribe to Dunkster Bricks. He will be getting to 50,000 subscribers very, very soon. Awesome guy. Awesome channel. Trying to figure out how this goes. Just like that. Like that. All right. Yeah, I, yeah, that's MacGyver. Always needed the duct tape. It's actually, I mean, uh, not to gross anybody out, let's get this video demonetized. I, um, I had a wart, and I put duct tape on it and left it on it, and it choked it out. So I, did, I read that somewhere that that would happen. I didn't believe it, but it did work. You know, duct tape. All right, let's bring the monetization back, huh? How does this stringy thing work? Oh, I don't like strings. Hey, the new storyteller is here. And I am sorry, but he's also in Australia. I have been a terrible person. I've had a lot of people send me nice things. And new storyteller is one of them. But I have neglected on sending out thank you cards or notes or letters. And I really apologize for that. It's rude on my part. And um, I need to do that. But new storyteller, very nice guy. In Australia. I hate tying the knots on the strings. <laughs> Medical advice with the king of BBI. Yeah. One of my favorite songs is by a group called Alaska. It's called uh, My Advice to You. And the song says, my advice to you is don't take my advice. And that's, that should be the advice of Brickzar. <laughs> my advice to you is don't take my advice. The Brickhead family is here. Hello. <laughs> Brother from another brick. That, I am building so slowly. All right. I, I I started this stream. I did check to see if anybody else that was in my subscription box had a stream. And like I said, it was BZ Power and LJ Johnson who do Bionicle stuff. So I, And I feel a little weird because, wait a minute, I'm doing kind of a Bionicle-esque thing, but just like you say, there's billion people on YouTube, so you can't just like always not do something. But if anybody's going to be doing a stream after this, I think there's a Saturday stream that people do. Um, be sure to check that out. And don't miss it because you're here with me. Jamie Bricks. Oh, you're welcome. This happens to me sometimes during the day, like if I'm at lunch or something, I want to watch something and nobody's live. I like it when people are live, you know, BFAB will sometimes be live when I'm at work. And what I do with BFAB, this brother from another brick, in case you don't know. I've listened to some of his videos while I'm driving. And BFAB, I don't think I ever told y'all this. I was driving one day. You were doing a, a video, so I couldn't come in on it because I was driving. I was listening to it. And it was you. And you know what? I can't even remember who else it was. <laughs> but y'all got to talking about me. And it was like, everybody was saying nice stuff, man. And I was like, that really made my day. Because <laughs> it's like, it's so easy. We we're talking a few minutes ago about negativity on YouTube and how, you know, people like to do negative things to get the views. And it's like, it was so nice, unsolicited for y'all to be over there and saying nice things about me. So I really appreciate it. And that made my day. And I neglected I sh when I got to where I was going, I meant to go and comment on the stream. I don't know that I ever did, but that was, um, yeah, that made my day. And it was a couple weeks ago, I think. Tree of Ore is here. Uh, 
Uh oh, I forgot to uh, catch up here. There we go. Thank you, BFAB. I appreciate that. Now, I, I'm not going to lie. Um, I've done my share of stupid things. I've probably said things that have hurt people. And I want to not be that person. So it's like all of us, every one of us out there, all of you, me, every person on earth, we can, none of us can go back in time and change anything that we've done. But we can always control what we're doing now into the future. So I like Bill and Ted's advice, you know, be excellent to each other. I should have heeded that advice. So that's what I, that's what I want to be. That doesn't mean you allow people to be mean and run you over and things like that, but it's a lot easier to be nice. And even when people aren't nice to you, you can handle it in a nice way. And answer in mild when mild turns away rage, you know, that type of thing. All right. Drew Christie. Love the monorail poster in the background. I got monorail. Monorail poster is from Bricks on the Dollar. I got that at Philly Bricks Fest. St. Killer J says we can't go back in time because it's hard to find phone booths and police boxes these days. Yeah. Did I ever tell y'all the uh, time I got attacked or I got scared by a vagrant? I want to say homeless person, but um, it, it, I live near Atlanta and I was working in downtown Atlanta near where the Georgia Dome was and where Mercedes Benz. And so this was before the Mercedes Benz Stadium was ever built. There was a big power substation down there, and the circuit I was working on was out. And back in that time, people were cutting, st people would steal the copper lines. They would cut them and take them off the telephone poles uh, and to go recycle them. It's nice of them to recycle, right? Um, oh, how does this go? Let me do something. So anyway, I was down there working. And I go over to the box because I see, oh, my circuit's open. And I go to the box and I'm measuring everything. And then this homeless guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, man, uh, there was this truck here earlier. And they parked their truck here. And then and then they uh, they they cut they cut the line. And, and so he was telling me what happened. And I was like, oh, man, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I called my supervisor. And let them know. And this, mind you, this is like one or two in the morning when I'm doing this. And so he and the guy would never stop talking. Then he was throwing rocks in the road and stuff. It's just like weird. I was like, and so he's talking, and I'm talking to my supervisor on the phone. And I was like, he was like, "Who's that with you?" And I said, "Well, it's just it's like a homeless guy here." And he said he saw the whole thing and he's telling me all about it. He's like, "Oh, okay." So I get off the phone with my supervisor. And trying to build and talk. And the homeless guy was like, and this story is going somewhere, by the way. <laughs> the homeless guy was like, hey, what you doing with my payphone? I'm like, I didn't do anything with your payphone. I want my payphone back. It was just like that. I'm like, we don't have payphones anymore. We don't make payphones anymore. He's like, I need my payphone back. I'm like, and then he started coming towards me. And, and so now I'm scared because I he's just like, he, it's like a switch went off in his head. He went from being completely harmless to like, I don't know what this guy's going to do. I'm here by myself. He has a bag and a trench coat. I don't know what he's got in his bag. I don't know what he's got in his trench coat. So I started backing up. Well, I couldn't get in my truck because he was getting that close to me. So I ran around behind my truck and I got my phone. I had my, pay, my not my pay phone, my cell phone. <laughs> I got my cell phone <laughs> and I dialed 911. <laughs> and which is funny because the only thing I do now is I work on 911, but I dialed 911 and they were like, What's, you know, what's your emergency? I said, I got a homeless guy. I don't know what he's going to do. And I was really scared. I was scared at this point. And I said, He's coming at me. He's mad about his pay phone. <laughs> it sounds funny now, uh, but I was scared. I was, I was scared. I was really scared. And, um, 
I ran around the truck and then he came around and I was able to get in the truck and drive off. And um, so I drove down the road and I'm still on the phone with 911. They said, are you going to be there? And I was like, no, I'm not going to be here. When he said, I said, I'm leaving. And so I drove off down the road a little ways and I said, you know what? I probably do need to go and talk to the police. So I drove back when the police got there and they got there in like two minutes. They were there in like two minutes. I mean, they got there super fast. City of Atlanta, please. And so they had the guy under control. And I went over there and talked to him. I said, look, I'm not trying to get the guy in trouble. But I said, I was really scared. And they're like, we know. <laughs> we understand. It's like, he could have a shiv or something. He's like, you don't need to take any chances. They said, you did the right thing, Colin. And I said, well, that makes me feel better. I said, I don't want press any charges or anything he's like look he's just they're gonna we'll take him in he'll get a shower and some food and that'll probably be good for him and i said okay so it it that was cool but i was so in the moment i was scared but it was all over a, a he wanted a pay phone and we don't make pay phones so that was my phone story i need to reenact that in lego one day let me put this on real quick then i'll look at the chat I hope y'all have enjoyed my story. All right. Yeah. yeah. I, and I'll tell my kids these stories. Um, and they, they're not stories in the sense that they're fake. These are real things that have happened to me. And it's like sometimes they're so real that you can't make them up. I mean, they're so, and they're so crazy. But um, that was one of the scaredest times I've ever had at work. I mean, I was, I was really scared. Uh, I mean, I and I, I was more scared then than the time I've had people come by with guns, believe it or not. Because <laughs> the, the time that the people had the guns, I knew what they were doing. They were hunting, and it wasn't like they were going after me. So, <laughs> do you want me to tell more phone stories? I might do that in other videos, because um, I got some good ones. And I'm going to try to put these stickers on. This thing's got stickers. Story time with Brickzar, says Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> and brick clone. <laughs> I, you know what? I think that would that would probably be more interesting than me building a Lego set. And I have actually thought of like doing some of these where we kind of reenact them with Lego. Like I thought about recording my story. Like I just put this sticker in the wrong place. No, that's right. Um, I thought about just like like what I just did now. I just told you my story, except I was building something while I was telling it. Like, just tell the story like I would tell it, like if I was telling it to somebody for the first time. Record it, and then reenact it with Lego. Like, create, like, and that one have been simple because it was basically you need a phone truck, a little box that I was working at, a telephone pole with the phone line cut, and the and the cable in real life, the cable is like that thick. I mean, it was huge um, that they cut. And then a homeless guy with a trench coat. Um, and that's about all you need. <laughs> and then a police car and a couple of policemen <laughs> to tell that story. And so, I don't know, maybe I should do that down the road and put this sticker on. I like my 911 stories, too. I actually, and for those that don't know, people still ask me, you know, what do you do? So I've worked for the phone company my, my last 20 years, but I, I used to do all kinds of stuff. And now, now the only thing that I do is work on 911. And so literally I work on 911, the systems the people that they use to answer the 911 calls. And there are times in my career with the phone company that I've had to actually dial 911 for real. So, <laughs> um, and I've dialed, I dial 911 on my personal phone and on my work phone. I dial 911 as far as like testing. I do it all the time. I mean, I dial 911. I, I can't even count how many times we've dialed 911 just to test a line or test a problem that they're having. Uh, but then when you really dial it, it's different. So you, you appreciate, you know, I work at all these different places in the metro Atlanta area where these these people answer these calls. And it's just amazing how they can multitask. I can't hardly build a Lego set and talk to you guys. 
these people are amazing. And I know a lot of times 911 dispatchers get a lot of bad rap uh, from people, but the ones I've worked with, pretty awesome. <laughs> now they will, because they're focused on what they're doing. Sometimes the technology side of it, they do some kind of silly things. And that's where the funny part comes in uh, with me. It's like, you got this person that can save your life, but they don't know that their phone is muted, that type of thing. Uh, all right, let me finish this. Kittenville Brick. <laughs> I would make a good Mr. Rogers. I want to get, I want to, <laughs> I just blew the stick. Literally, this is true. I just, I hope I'm not using literally wrong. All right. When I, I always had in mind having a train run behind me like on Mr. Rogers. So we want to do that at some point. If I have a Lego city, I want, if I have a place where I sit down and talk to you about things, I want to have that train where I can have the trolley or another train go behind me, just like on Mr. Rogers. That's the only reason I watch Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Yep. That's true. Lego freak drove two hours one way because somebody muted their phone and they didn't realize it. Yep, yep, yep. The funniest, well, I've, there are a lot of funny things, but in this, I shouldn't say this is the funniest, but one of, one funny thing was when, um, this was a long time ago, long time, long time. Um, I'll just make this a short story. It, it's got more to it, but um, I was working on the, they had a position that they answer is a console. It's a big console. It's in a desk. It kind of sits down at an angle. It's mounted. It's like slope. I want to build these one day so you can build them out of Lego so you can kind of get a picture of what I'm talking about. But the console wasn't working. It was totally dead. There's a common part on that that usually dies. That um, So I changed that out and it still is dead. I'm like, oh, oh I'm going to have to do the hard thing. I'm going to have to take the whole thing out. So I picked the, the things mounted in there like that. I unscrewed it. Then Pulled it out. And this thing's pretty big. It's about the size of a PC. I mean, it's huge. I pulled it out, set it on the desk. And when I set it on the desk, all this brown liquid ran out. It was coffee. And I was like, um, did somebody spill coffee on this console? And she was like, yeah, I had it sitting up above and it fell over into it. And I didn't want to tell you because I thought I might get in trouble. I'm like, this is this is what I want you to do. I was like, I'm not going to get anybody in trouble. If you know what has messed something up, just tell me. I will fix it. I don't care the reason. Just tell me what happened, and I will fix it. You don't need. But yeah, they they poured. They accidentally spilled coffee, and it fried everything. So I had to replace the whole unit. Uh, but it would have saved like 30 minutes if she just told me that at the beginning. So what is, how do you build this part? What is, oh, that's what this is for. Okay, this is weird. It's like a man-eater, man-eating plant. All right, so you got that thing. I got my favorite part of this whole set, though. I want to go on BrickLink and buy like a hundred of these. Brick Vibe, are you watching? Do you got a hundred of these? Oh my! Ugh. Whoops! Hold on, it just jumped over my block. Come on, back. Hold on. All right, so is that Breeze? There's his machine. So this is like a Walker type thing. You can put the dude in there. Oops. I'm not really digging it. Okay. There we go. Got that, that. There's his little gun. And these are all my extra pieces. I got three hands left over. I don't think I was supposed... I think I was supposed to use those hands somewhere. Hold on a minute. I, I gotta see where I was supposed to put those hands. Hold on. I missed... There's three of them. I'm pretty sure there shouldn't be three left over. I'm looking. I probably should be looking at the comment section to tell me where I've missed. Okay. Got one there. 
Oh, it's on the chair. It's on his chair. That's where they go. So he's got to have little hand holders here. On the chair. And now i got the proper amount of leftover pieces. All right. So that's his little controls. The Breeze Flea Machine. I mean, I literally was happy after step one. I didn't need to build the rest of this. This is my favorite piece in Hero Factory. I'm going to go get... Uh, I need to find a seller selling about like 100 of these. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to have some in my store. Because, all right, so I got that built. I don't really need to show you all much more about it, I guess. Because I don't know what this thing is. I'm sure there's a story with it. I could read the comic here. It tells you what the story is. Um, but... I just wanted to build it. I've never built a Hero Factory set. I will say that it's a little different than I expected. Um, I don't think these things hold very well. And it's got string. I don't really like... Next to stickers, I don't like string. Um, but this is... That's a pretty cool piece. So what I got is I got two more of these in my collection. And what we're going to do is I'm going to part these out so I can get the piece for... I Actually, I think I need six of them. I need the this pearl dark gray or whatever this is. I need I think I need six of those for the bat pods. So the bat pods behind me right here. So I'll get those out and then I'll get me a couple extra of these <laughs> to play with. The flea. Is that the flea? Oh, I did it wrong. Hold on a minute. Ooh. And join us next time for another story time with Rigzar. I really should change the title of this video, but I have really enjoyed this, and I'm sorry, like I said, a lot of you have commented. I'm sure I missed a lot of the comments. I apologize for that. So if I've missed your comment at any point in here and you said something funny, um, the easiest way for me to see it, because I'm not necessarily going to rewatch the whole video and look at the live chat, uh, leave me a comment after the video is over. And I'll try to, to look at that. I do try to look at all the comments I get. You know, being a small YouTuber like me, it's like I'm usually able to reply to comments uh, or at least hard them or acknowledge them at some point. And I, I know I try. I don't always, but I, I, I really don't have an excuse. But um, <laughs> Steven says, I'd love to see another adult enjoying Lego. Thank you. Yeah, so we got the fleas. <laughs> we told a couple of stories. That I need to make in Lego form. I got more stories where they came from. And we didn't even get to the Six Flags one. Those are the best ones. Those are really good too. Anyway, I will, I'm will. i going to go. Uh, I want to thank everybody who joined. And again, like I said, I'm sorry that uh, if I've missed your comments um, in, the, in the stream. I'll try to go back and look at some of them. But um, yeah, I made my day. And it was mainly me talking and looking at your comments and building the flea machine. But thank you very much. It's kind of therapeutic. And as always, as Bill and Ted says, be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes.